So uh, as, as mentioned, we now are moving on to our, our second presentation of the, of the session, um, which will be by the illustrious Mahir Moshed, who is a graduate student at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign's electrical and computer engineering department. He's an admin or an administrator on Wikidata and also in the Bengali Wikisource. Now Wikisource is a sister project of the Wikimedia universe. You might, you obviously know of Wikipedia, you obviously know of Wikidata. Wikisource is the primary text or uh, repository. If you know Project Gutenberg, it's like that. Uh, so Mahir is an administrator on the Bengali Wikisource uh, for a couple of years now, and has been working to improve the coverage of South Asian topics on Wikidata and the quality of texts in Bengali on Wikisource for references in Wikidata for quite a number of years now. Uh, Mahir, welcome and over to you. All right, thank you, Liam, for the great introduction. Um, again, my name is Mahir. Uh, I edit as user Mahir256. Um, although I'll be editing as a different user here 256 for the duration of this session. And as you can see, the topic of this presentation is advanced Wikidata tools and concepts. Um, it's more than just P's and Q's. Um, it's a lot of L's, a lot of F's, a lot of S's, a lot of M's, um, and M and M, I guess, as well. Um, it, that, that's not even a joke. We're going to be dealing with those letters a lot. <laughs> um, but we can start actually with uh, M and M, which I think in some alternate incarnation of this of Rob's session he might be able to go into but he asked me to take a look at this and show you um, a lot about uh, m and which I'm using as an abbreviation for mix and match and then later we can talk about L's F's and S's with lexemes and then um, M's with structured data in commons or SDC. Um, I'm trying not to dwell on these slides too much. Uh, I also want to make this fairly interactive um, as well. Um, that's why you see five other tabs here to demonstrate things. Um, but it's good to have those slides open. I mean, you can follow along. I think the link was is in the um, SCED entry for this presentation, but I'll paste it in the chat just so everyone can see it. Because um, there are also links in there that will probably follow from um, that presentation. So we can get started and talk about um, mix and match and we'll sort of motivate the inclusion for mix and match or the, the existence of mix and, ma of mix and match for uh, a few minutes and then we can dwell on how one might end up using it uh, and what we can do with it. Um, so we can start off by talking about what is it that we're mixing and matching? You know, we're um, all in this combined realm where we realize that there's lots of different catalogs out there. There's the serious like Getty's art and uh, architecture thesaurus. And there's the silly ones like know your meme. And then there's large ones like uh, Britannica and then small ones like the list of episodes of Avatar on uh, the internet movie database. Uh, and all of those end up having properties um, on Wikidata. I mean, uh, Rob's done a good job showing us that the column catalog of individuals from West Point has its own individual property. And all of these other four catalogs also have properties. Uh, one thing that might motivate you at that point is to see if you can import all of the entries for a given catalog into Wikidata somehow. Um, but obviously like data is not very clean. It'll take a while to actually do the, make the reconciliation happen. So if you can't do this automatically, uh, why not do it manually? I mean, that's the other option at this point, right? Um, but you could also turn it into like a little game, get everyone involved, sort of crowdsource the effort to um, make this reconciliation happen. And that's where the tool mix and match comes in. It was developed by uh, Magnus Manskit very early on in Wikidata's history, um, where basically any individual user of Wikidata can upload their particular catalog, um, it could be, as noted before, the list of memes on Know Your Meme. It could be the list of um, articles in the current incarnation of Encyclopedia Britannica. Um, these are all our actual catalogs, by the way, and we can show that in a bit. But basically the idea is you import these catalogs and then essentially what you can do is you can go through the list of entries in the catalog and then match them to individual Wikidata items sort of one by one. Um, you can discard matches if they don't make sense. You could indicate that certain entries don't have Wikidata items and probably shouldn't have them. Um, and through that, you end up slowly reconciling your catalog with Wikidata because by that point, the specific property that, you, that your catalog probably has a mapping towards 
will show up in the Wikidata list um, or in the Wikidata items that you decide to reconcile with. Um, and of course, if there aren't Wikidata items for given entries in your catalog, you can always create them on the fly. Um, it's a pretty powerful tool. There are still lots of catalogs that have yet to be reconciled at the moment, but um, you know, that's what the tool is for. It's a, a great way to spend time. It's a pretty easy thing to do. Um, so let's get to it. Um, there's a link at the top of this slide. I can, I should be able to copy paste that, but here I, here I go. Um, I'm actually going to keep the slide open on this tab and then just jump to, and then just jump to the tab here, mix and match. So it looks sort of like this. You can see that there are individual catalog groups where you can sort of categorize um, your catalog into say, the catalogs about cinema, about music, about software about Wolfram Mathematica, and then a number of other different topics. Um, the latest catalogs, you can kind of see the diversity here. You have individuals um, in a, in a um, academic society, you have sports people, you have more sports people, you have classifications, official classifications from Australia. Um, and there's even a lot more. Uh, we can go to, um, this is the, you may recognize column IDs from Rob's session where these are graduates of West Point up to 1890. Uh, you can see most of them have been matched so far. Um, some of them are, were automatically matched. There is a facility to make that happen, but you still have to confirm that as a user. Um, and then there's of course other categories as well. Um, you can kind of see the history of matches over time. So this is sort of where the gamification aspect comes in. Um, you can see how quickly um, different matches have been made over time. And you can also see, okay, who made the most matches? Um, and look at that, third place is Rob. So um, there, and, and actually this is where the actual gamification definitely comes into play, you know, um, of this process. So we can go into this catalog. Um, let's go to the preliminary matched items here. Um, and you can see that there's, uh, what, three pages of item of entries in the column catalog that have yet to be matched. Um, so you can see there's Michael M. Clark, Billy Magruder, James Moore, and they've been matched preliminarily to different wiki, wiki data items, um, which you can confirm or you can remove. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping by now you can, you've sort of reached this point. I mean, uh, just to uh, reiterate, you can go to the mix and match page, which is here, um, mixandmatch.toolforge.org. Uh, Liam put the link in the chat. Uh, and, and good, thank you for putting the catalog page. But if you want to get there manually, you can just go to search catalogs, type column, and click on that. And we're looking at the preliminarily matched page here. So it'll be um, actually this separate link here, which, which ends in auto. Um, and we can sort of see, okay, how, what can we do um, with some of these um, items here? Well, let's, first of all, let's see. So this Michael M. Clark person, class of 1826, was matched to this item. I can kind of guess that this isn't probably the same person because the middle initial is different, but we can verify that. Michael J. Clark. You can see that there's a lot of uh, languages which don't have labels for this item. Um, as Rob noted, you can add them if you're sufficiently multilingual. Um, instance of human, male, Michael Clark, is in VIAF, Library of Congress, botanist, uh, Hmm, there's a good chance this isn't the same person. And not even going off the middle initial, sorry, let me uh, enable JavaScript on this site. Let's see if this is the same person. Um, probably not, there isn't much on this person, so to speak. We're capable, okay, 1978, that's probably not right. Um, I, I, I don't, I, I, that doesn't seem right at all, just looking at it. So this is probably isn't Michael J. Clark, so we can remove that. Um, and you can go through this. Uh, I'd like to see uh, you guys take some time to try going through these matches, see which of them are in fact matched to the right items and which one um, aren't. And of course, yeah, uh, as Rob mentioned, you don't have to match everything. There's still a lot of uh, items and a lot of catalogs that have yet to be matched. But if you do find a good match um, between some of these items, you can go through and um, actually make the match happen, just confirm or remove. One thing I should note is um, if you were anonymously editing during Rob's session, you will have to be logged in to make edits during through this tool. Um, so where I, where it says welcome here 256, you will see the words log in and that'll prompt you to authorize the tool to make edits um, on your behalf. 
Um, and from there, you can uh, make matches happen. Um, so uh, let me know if you're able to find some uh, an item in this actually small list that um, you can match to someone. And if you can't, um, and let, let's see. Um, yeah, that, that's true, yeah. Um, and the thing I mentioned about logging in applies to all different items, um, or all different tools. Um, most tools require you to uh, have an account to edit through them. But um, if you are logged in, you can try edit your hand at editing, uh, at confirming some of these matches, these preliminary matches um, with, uh, okay, that's good. See, I'm, I'm, gl I'm glad you found a, found a match. Um, we we'll probably go to the end. Maybe there's more uh, matches here. Um, with column IDs. Okay, this is a in interesting. See, th yeah, th yeah, thanks for removing that match. I, um, I guess someone else who is more interested in U.S. military history will go back to the item for Ly Lyman Kellogg and uh, find the right person for that. Um, some of these don't look right, though. I could be wrong. Let's see, Smith Russell. Lord Francis, 1888. Um, well, I'll, I'll leave the, those alone in case uh, it interests. Okay. See, it's, it's good. Uh, good to see everyone's um, making uh, matches. Um, I should um, note that, of course, there's other um, categories of interest you to go through them. Um, it says it's not authorized. Um, you, you, just a reminder, you should be logged in if you're not already. If there is a problem beyond lo just logging in, um, put it in the Q&A um, doc and I'll um, be happy to take a look at it um, afterwards. Um, but that's sort of the general idea. You can of course import and scrape new um, catalogs uh, as well. I'm not gonna go into that, but that's sort of a sort of easy, simple way to you know use it. You could use it on a phone. There's a mobile interface. I, don't know the link off uh, offhand, but if you wanted to, you know, match um, external identifiers to Wikidata items, you can use this tool's mobile interface. So that's um, mix and match in a nutshell. Um, we sort of did that. We sort of did this. Um, I'll leave this to you. Um, we were in the preliminarily matched um, um, section, but we can also go to unmatched. And if you wanted to make items for um, say George C. Richards, you could make, create a new item by clicking new item. Or if you wanted to specify a Q item, you could Q ID, you could specify the Q ID there. Um, all right. Um, so that's sort of mix and match in a nutshell. Um, you guys can enjoy that for a bit. Um, and um, we can move on uh, quickly. We'll quickly run through uh, lexicographical data, um, i.e. words you might find in some language um, that may be listed, may or may not be listed in a dictionary, but this is sort of the upper, higher level way of describing them, so to speak. Um, so what are lexemes? So those of us who are not necessarily uh, uh, linguistically inclined may uh, be less familiar with this term, but it, there are a number of inter interrelated things which define a lexeme. First of all, um, you know, we, we have to refer to it somehow, and that's what the lemma is. It's, it's just the form you find in, in a dictionary um, of a particular word. Um, you know, so you have, say, the word house, um, which is how you would find it if you were in a dictionary, you'd look for the word house. Um, it, of course, will have some inflectional forms, like uh, house is the singular, but then houses is the plural. They have different, uh, there are different ways of writing the two, um, so they count as separate forms. Um, the representations of those forms in different writing styles. Um, this is more of uh, this is more of note for languages that do have different scripts that are they're written in. So, for example, you have uh, something like the Southern Min or Minnan language in spoken in uh, Fujian Province in Taiwan, where there you can write it in characters, but you can also write it in a number of different romanization schemes. Each of those schemes plus the characters will be different representations. Um, the senses they encompass, you know, so house by itself is not just, you know, a dwelling in which one resides, but it could also refer to, you know, one of the chambers in a bicameral legislature or, or something like that. Um, or even the verb house, meaning to provide such a dwelling um, for someone. 
different senses and then usages of those words you know um you can assert that a word is being used in some fashion but um it would help to know how it would, help, it would help to have an example you know it's an attestation of those of that word and and, and there's so much more um, beyond that as well um and the thing about wikidata is that there is a separate namespace as you will uh for lexicographical data of this sort um the example i'm going to use here is a bengali word for heart just to sort of demonstrate the sorts of things inside them and we'll, we'll see in a, in a bit how the resemblance to items might be made. Um, so we, we, let's let's look at a let's look at a lexeme. Um, this is the lexeme again for the Bengali word for heart. You'll see that this has a representation as such um, written in the Bengali script, obviously, and it's marked as being in Bengali. Um, if Bengali were written in some other script, you would have a different representation uh, here with with some different language code. And just as items, as Rob described, had Q items, uh, Q IDs, these had L IDs um, with the possible um, insertion of the prefix lexeme if you wanted to refer to it as a page. But the, the lexemes themselves, just like items, I mean, they're identified primarily by um, the L IDs. But unlike, um, unlike with items, the, the lemma here is going to be uh, primarily shown whatever language you use for your interface. So I'm using the English interface, but this will sh still show up at the top, um, it's a, which is useful because it's a Bengali lexeme. And we can see that this has a lexical category of noun. Um, and, um, and for the lexeme as a whole, we can attribute usage examples. So these are just some usages of um, this word, the Bengali word for heart, in a number of different publications from uh, Ramindranath Tagore. Um, and then you, you can see that these are, these are examples and the references here are uh, sort of linked to the specific poems um, or other writings of Tagore that, uh, with, that have Wikidata items. And that's where that interest in uh, developing Wikisource sort of comes in. Um, and you can see that we've tied each of these examples to a specific form and a specific sense. Um, and we can go through the senses um, here. You can see that, of course, they, they map to different meanings um, in a number of different ways. So this first meaning, which is sort of the metaphorical meaning, um, has a definition from this public domain dictionary and it's used, it uses gloss quote as the, uh, as the property that links this definition to that sense. Um, but you could also do it more systematically. So this is the meaning for the actual organ in your body. And there's a property item for the sense, which maps the sense here. This, this is where the S item, S IDs come in. So it maps L301993 S2 to the item for heart. Um, and you can see when we go to heart, this is the item for the circulatory system organ. Um, and there's also, there's also another word namely this one, which has exactly the same meaning. Um, so if you wanted to attach synonyms, um, you could um, do so pretty easily. Um, and of course, there's different inflectional forms for this one lexeme. So the, the nominative case version is the same. And we've transliterated it into a number of different transliteration schemes. You know, if you're working with a Japanese lexeme, you might find adding the uh, Hepburn or the Kuneshiki romanizations. But um, anything could be attached. You can even attach pronunciation audio. You know, if you have a file on commons that of you pronouncing a given word in a certain form, you can attach it to um, individual forms. So it, it has this sort of form, which re should remind you a lot of how, about how um, items are organized. Um, everything is very well compartmentalized and, um, you know, it, it is organized pretty well, I think. Um, so, um, and other lexemes like this could be more or less detailed. Um, I mean, there is a showcase, um, or at least a proposed showcase. I don't know that it's actually real just yet. Um, and we can find lexemes in a number of different places. Um, I, I, I say just kidding because when you decide to visit the actual Wikipedia, Wikidata list of pages that are lexemes, you get a lot of Russian stuff and it's not really ordered in a decent fashion. So, um, but there are a number of other tools, including Ordia, um, which is used, um, which gives you a lot of uh, different views of a given lexeme. So we can use uh, Nordenotzing Luftballons. And you can see um, that 
all the information that was on the item is being listed in a more straightforward form. Uh, the forms and the senses are uh, next to each other. Uh, and you can see that this, the sense itself is defined both in German and in English, uh, in both cases, and they even have nice images. Um, and there's a number of other features in Ordia um, that are um, useful to um, explore. Uh, there's another tool called Hauke, which is, um, it, it's just similar to Ordia and it's Lexeme display capabilities, but um, I don't know, it, it seems like a, it's a more minimal interface in my view. So you can go to the list of English Lexemes, um, which is a long list. Um, so we'll let that load in the background. Um, and we'll return to it once this tab loads. Um, and just like uh, Rob was showing with the um, with items, you can also query Lexemes with the query service. So um, just, just to save time, I'm, I'm going to use the link that's in the slide, w.wiki slash e. Um, and this query, if it runs, will list all of the Lexemes that are in English. And you can see that um, you, know, you have describe, you have supercalifragilistic, you have highlight, which are two different Lexemes. So maybe one of them is a noun and one of them is a verb. Um, and here you can sort of see, okay, the Hauke tab uh, loaded. Um, all the same sorts of lexemes in this list, just in a more, in a, in a nicer form. So like this, you don't need to know Wikidata, uh, the, how to query Wikidata to actually go through it. Um, so we can go to, uh, let's pick up, let's pick the lexeme a lot, um, see how it displays here. Um, and you can see that there's the single form a lot, and then there's the sense, the usual sense that, uh, that we, typically use when we refer to a lot. Um, and, and if you wanted to show more information based on a given query, that is unfortunately something we won't have time to do. But if you have questions about querying the query service for Lexemes, uh, put it in the Q&A doc and I'll be happy to uh, address it. Um, and of course there are other tools that allow you to make uh, use of this, uh, of, of for creating Lexemes a lot faster. Um, Lucas Verkmeister nicely created a Lexeme forms tool. So like if you have a language with a bunch of, with a bunch of inflections, then um, you can add all those inflections all at once and the Lexeme you create will have all of them from the get-go. Um, the Lexeme I showed for heart had five forms, and, but you know there might be 20, 50, or 100, however many your language provides. Um, so that was Lexeme sort of in a nutshell. Um, but um, there's, what we get out of, of course, is more than just items and lexemes. Um, there's also uh, structured data on commons, which is a more recent thing. Um, and there have been a number of very interesting developments on this front. So let's run through um, that real fast. Um, so on, on Wikidata, you know, besides people, um, items, which Rob showed, we have different items for different, you know, types of audiovisual media, you know, photographs, like raising the flag, paintings, Netherlandish proverbs, and so on and so forth. Um, but of course, um, this is in the public domain, this is in the public domain, this is in the public domain, so on and so forth. So these have, or at least should have, um, some manifestation on Wikimedia Commons. Um, I mean, those objects are there and we can, of course, annotate their Wikidata items, but would it be better to just annotate the file directly? Um, like what of those same objects on Wikimedia Commons? Uh, for, for this, we, the, the, world of structured data on commons was ultimately created. It's essentially just a way of connecting the vast world of Wikidata uh, at commons as footsteps. Um, so we can sort of take a look at this, um, hey, this, this image, uh, Joe Rosenthal's image of um, raising the flag on Iwo Jima. And um, you can see when, when, we go to the, when we go to the file page, you'll notice there's file information uh, and structured data. There's like two little tabs um, here. Um, and here you can add a caption. It's similar to a label, as you might see on a Wikidata item. Um, and, you know, you could add the caption raising the flag on, on Iwo Jima um, there. But then there's also the structured data, which, which should remind you of Wikidata the moment you see it. So um, you'll notice that there's a property here. But this is actually a property called depicts. And there's a number of subjects here that are being listed as depicted in this image. Um, this could be revised a bit, but you can see that there's a link to, this is actually the item that I had mentioned, 
117693. This is the item for the actual image. And then there's a number of um, less specific um, items that it's linked to, such as flag, Iwo Jima, war, the United States. That, that could be cleaned up a bit, but uh, that gives you an idea of what we can link to a given um, uh, piece of media. Um, obviously, these aren't. This isn't the only one, although it is for Commons. It's pretty prominent. Um, it's pretty important to have that. Um, this is true as well of um, you know the paintings, videos, music. You might expect those. We also have um, files for individual 3D models to which you could add um, you know, individual dimensions. Like here's a model of Michelangelo's David. If you want, okay, there isn't one right now, but let's add one. So there's depicts and then uh, let's see if we can find David from this list. Okay, Michelangelo's maybe? There we go, state statue by Michelangelo. Agree, publish changes. So now, uh, if we wanted to query, there is a query service for this in beta. Um, if we wanted to query for files that depict Michelangelo's David, this will show up um, in the result. Um, and this is true, and we can do this for everything. This is a link to the Gutenberg Bible. Um, and there, are, of course, there's a way to do, the, the, I had mentioned the query service a number of times, um, so, uh, which is still in beta, but uh, if you wanted to, for example, show query, show uh, pages depicting the Empire, the Empire State Building. Uh, and we'll need to enable JavaScript. Um, okay, um, let's redo that link. Um, and you can see that um, all of these images, they depict the Empire State Building, but it's only through the use of the depict statement that these are being, you know, filtered through. Um, like we can go to the, this photo from the top of the Rockefeller Center, and we can see that the structure data shows depicts Empire State Building. It was created by user PA Hudson and it is copyrighted under Creative Commons. The point of view coordinate is given. So if you wanted to put these on a map, the way um, Rob was putting uh, Michelin star restaurants on a map, you could do that. It was created at this time and we have a list property for the source. Um, there's more ways to uh, query this um, more in depth. And to add structured data, so it's pretty easy, just the way Wikidata items are edited. You just go to the file and then you click the structured data tab. As I showed, there's a structured data tab. It's file information here with a summary and the structured data tab. You can get cracking on adding um, entries uh, to this, uh, to the file. And this is true for all files on Commons, by the way. If it's on Wikimedia Commons, you can add structured data to it. Um, so um, I see we're, at, running out of time, but there's so much more to explore, um, not just in the presentation slides that I skipped, but also um, if you wanted to ex reconcile catalogs automatically, there's a great tool that uh, Antonin Delpuch uh, created called OpenRefine uh, that a lot of people use for ent reconciling entire catalogs. I had mentioned the showcase le lexemes earlier. Uh, there's a number of example queries for the Commons Query Service that's being added very quickly. Um, it's, it's growing, it was created like earlier this week. Uh, and if you want, ha, have questions about queries in general of all of these things, these can all be queried. You can um, use uh, request a query and um, there's also a weekly status update where there's showcase queries for a number of different things. Um, so that, that's um, all I have for today. Thank you so much for uh, following. I'm hoping you're able to uh, follow this pretty well. Um, I'm hoping this wasn't a, uh, too much of a step up from Rob's, um, Rob's presentation, but, but uh, it was, so be it. Um. Thank you very much, Mahir. There have been a variety of questions in the conversation and on the Q&A document. So as with, as with the previous presentation, um, I encourage people to place their more, uh, the questions they do want an answer for over on the Q&A document and I encourage Mahir to go over there and uh, give a second look at some of the questions which have already been answered by other people to see if you have any other uh, nuances you'd like to address. The community has been quite active in trying to answer each other's questions while you've been speaking and giving links to the things you've been talking about. Thank you very much for your whirlwind tour around some of the more advanced tools available and Lexemes. It's rare to get a presentation on Wikidata's Lexemes activity. It's a fascinating section of the community that is even less understood or less spoken about than 
uh, Wikidata itself in the wider metadata community and it needs more attention. So thank you for sharing that information.